Now it goes. Okay. Come on over here, Ryan. That way you can yeah, go, go, go ahead. That way we can. I showered. <laughs> no one wants yeah, right. to sit over it's there. Not, it's just you, Chuck. It's not how you smell. Yeah. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, we got to do much better than that. There's few, but we got to do much better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, praise the Lord. Very good. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, it's so good to see each and every one of you here. Thank you for braving the cold, although today is a, a heat wave compared to what we've had. And uh, want to thank you very, very, very much for your prayers. Uh, as most of you, if not all of you are aware, uh, my mother went to be with the Lord and uh, last uh, Saturday, and, and um, uh, she's with the Lord, and I, I praise God for that. Uh, she's not in any pain anymore. Uh, it's hard. I'm I'm uh, kind of like an empty shell, feel really ripped up inside, but um, I, I, I praise God that she's she's in a better place. Number one, and, and number two, that that she's whole, and so we we thank God for that. Um, when my mother passed away, I had been pastoring, uh, my grandmother passed away, I had been pastoring for uh, about five years at that time, 22 years ago, and, and uh, 23 years ago. And so what happened was at the, at the casket, I was very upset, obviously. And my uncle, who is a pastor as well, he's pastoring for 40 years, he's retiring this June. Um, Ed came up to me and wrapped his arm around me and he said, um, this is where your theology hits the road. Do you believe what you preach? Do you believe what you know? And um, and that really kind of jarred me. And and, and it's grieving, and, and I'm crying a lot, and I will have many, 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 many more tears. I know that. But um, I'm not crying for her. I'm, I'm crying for me. I'm, I'm going to miss her, and I'm sad. And so, but... Uh, it's a uh, it's it's a celebration. I actually um, uh, a couple nights ago in, during in my prayer time, I actually repented because I said, Lord, you know, I'm being selfish. She's not in any pain or, or hurting anymore, and you know, and I'm bubbling, bubbling, blubbering about myself, and and so uh, we're <laughs> celebrating. So this uh, Monday will be uh, the services and and. Uh, we had to have it a week later because uh, we have family and friends going to be traveling from a, a, a lot of places. But um, so they're going to be uh, flying in and things like that. And, and so the viewing will be from three to six at Grizel's, and then we're going to have a service at six. And then I guess they're going to do a dinner uh, that night. I don't know what it's going to be. I think a buffet of a, a ribeye steak, I believe. Uh, uh, that's what I requested. I don't know. Just I don't for, know. Just for you, I'll just. Eat. <laughs> yeah. going to be one, only, only for ribeye, right? For, no, for you. For me, okay. It's going to be uh, one one pecan pie and thirty forks. One pecan pie and thirty forks, and, and so uh, that that'd be all right, uh, as long as there's not thirty pecan pies and one fork. That's that would be rough. But um, and so and then later uh, she's going to be uh, she's going to be taken to uh, Illinois, and uh, that's where my dad grew up. And I had a brother who passed away. And, um, and so she wanted to be buried by the baby. Uh, what, so the, God, has, God has done so many incredible things through this that it amazes me. Um, my brother and, and niece decided to, to surprise mom and dad, and they flew out for Christmas, and mom and dad didn't know that. And so they flew out for Christmas from California and spent a few days, which was only of the Lord. Uh, my mother and, si and her sister are very close, but they had just just had talked in about a year. Not anything negative, just you know, you get busy. And uh, they had a, a two-hour talk on Tuesday. Uh, my brother, my mom, and, and another uncle uh, have a great relationship, but they just don't connect too often. And for some reason, they connected for a few hours. Um, it just as she told me Friday, she said this was the best Christmas that she had. Uh, with her boys there, and, and that was a, probably the first time we've had all of our family together in it's probably 16 years, and so uh, that was a good thing. Um, Friday afternoon, she was sleeping, and Dad was sitting at the couch watching TV, uh, a gunslinger, I think, and uh, she started talking in her sleep and then started laughing. And as she was talking, she said, uh, um, no, I'm ready to come see you. 
And when she woke up, Dad said, who, who are you talking to? And she said, I was talking to Mom, her mother, my grandmother, who went to be with the Lord. So I think she knew. I think she knew. So passed in her sleep, praise the Lord. And uh, it, But it, uh, it stinks. It stinks. So uh, bear with me. And uh, we're going to get through because God is still God. God is still good. Uh, God has received a, a faithful servant. And uh, so you're stuck with me. And she, she liked you all. So... Since she liked y'all, I guess I'm here with you forever. So, uh, Amen. We, we praise God for that. But um, I want to hear, I want to hear where you've seen God lately. I, I, I saw God in all that stuff that I talked about her last week. I, I think her last week, I, I think she knew. I, I really do think that God gave her a little bit of knowledge. Uh, I, you know, you don't know. You don't know. But uh, um, so that's where I saw God in, in the midst of, of all this. Uh, um, the, the nurse, uh, the charge nurse, when she came in, and I, I, I knew what was happening. I, I knew what was happening at the hospital. And, and she came in and she said, you know, is there, is there a priest or, or pastor or rabbi that I can call for you? And, and um, we didn't say anything. Um, and, and she said, I don't, I don't know if you, you guys don't need one. And uh, um, later I said, well, why'd you say that? She said, I just... I, there was a strength in you all, and I'm thinking, I don't know what that means, but uh, it was very, very interesting, and so um, she's with the Lord. We praise God for that. Th this is another thing. I, I don't want to spend all time talking about mom. Sorry. But, um, Sorry. Uh, but uh, this last Sunday, I was going to preach on the good news that lies ahead, which uh, is heaven, and so the whole sermon was on heaven. And obviously, poor Pastor Donna, thank you very much to her. She <laughs> filled in in a pinch, uh, poor gal, and uh, um, did a great job. I watched the services online. And, and what, what's so uh, interesting is, is I was praying to the Lord. I said, man, that, that was a good sermon. And he said, that's, that's the funeral message. And I thought, isn't it odd the Sunday I was going to preach on heaven, Mom goes to be with heaven the day before. And... I know it I would have been very interesting preparing a sermon now. And so it, it, God just did, he did all kinds of stuff, things. And he always does. He always does. So, All right, so where have you seen God lately? Someone else, someone else, where have you seen God lately? It kind of goes along with what you were saying, but at lunch today we were talking, I didn't even know how, I think we talked about Christmas presents, but it, I explained that the, I'm thankful for windows and wood burners because both sets of my grandparents, before, before they passed away, while they were alive, they shared money with us, uh, kids, and wanted to see us use it for something. And my grandfather gave us money, and I think we have like 22 windows in our house. We lived below the ground for a long time, so windows are a big deal. And there's not a time that I don't look through the window and see the sun coming and that I don't think about his kindness. And then my other grandparents, I was able to buy my outdoor wood burner. And quite often, now not when I'm trudging out to it, but when I feel the warmth or I feel the shower and I know that that water was warm. And that during their life, they both got to see those things help us. Yes. And, and I was reminded that not just that legacy financial but so much so, so much more that we leave for our children are the things that aren't tangible like that. And, and I, want, I want my kids, and I want kids, people, to look back and not just remember the kind financial or physical things I did for them, but I hope they were touched by something way more valuable than that. Right. And it's a, it's a, it 
it's a responsibility almost. I, not as a burden, but I feel it as a great responsibility to leave them something of value. Amen. Our, our life is not important of financially what we leave or even possessions. It's, it's the, the fingerprints that we leave on each other. Someone else, someone else. Where have you seen God, I think? Um, over Christmas vacation, we got to spend time with all of our families, my husband's family and our family. My husband had the week off, and it made it really nice. And we got to just spend time as a family. With, like, my husband was home, we were off school, and it just was really nice. We played games, and my daughter's five now, so she could play. It was, it was a really enjoyable, actually, like learning to play games with the kids and stuff. It was really nice. Amen. Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Someone else, where have you seen God lately? All right. I see that you all are still chilled to the bones. So we'll, we'll go ahead. Let me have a word of prayer, and we'll uh, get started. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you for this time. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters. And Lord, uh, thank you for the times that we see you and how you are constantly moving. And, and thank you, Father, for the people who have put fingerprints on our lives, uh, like Rich's grandparents and mom and so many others that each one of us can name that, that we're better people because of them. And so, Father, thank you. And may we be those who are leaving fingerprints on others, on helping them and drawing them closer to you. And so, Father, thank you. Uh, uh, be with our state tonight and, and uh, be with my brothers and sisters as they travel home and make sure they get home safely. Be with all those who have to be out and about, especially uh, this next uh, rest of the week if it gets really as cold as they're expecting. Just keep people warm and keep them safe. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Isaac, I'm going to put you to work because you got young legs. Now, my, where my dad lives, uh, there are several, several mostly older people, several people in their 90s. And they see me and they say, well, you're the young one, so would you do this? So uh, I, I'm doing, <laughs> they're putting me to work there. Well, we got so excited, I got so excited about the study of the, of the body that uh, we just jumped right into it and, and we talked about blood. And of course, uh, uh, Abby didn't want to go to that one. She, she stood outside not listening to a word because she didn't want to hear about the blood. And so um, then after I went back and started looking at all my stuff, I thought, oh, we missed the introductory uh, kind of study of it, the overall. And I thought, well, it... This is good stuff, so thanks, sir. We, we got to go back and we got to look at it. And, and uh, so that's kind of what we're going to do tonight. And uh, as, I, as I hope and try to every, every Wednesday, I try to get you out here a little bit early. But, of course, that never works. So uh, we'll see. All right. And I hope you have your Bibles because you're going to be looking up a lot of verses. First of all, we're made in his image. And, and when we, we think of that, First of all, someone define for me what image <coughs> is. What is image? Something that looks alike. Something that looks alike. Well, even back it up even more so than that. What is an image? A reflection. A resemblance. A reflection, a resemblance, or, or a picture, or a portrait. Uh, a painting, uh, a thing that is an image. Uh, all these things, uh, you, you guys are, are thinking theologically right now, and I'm, I'm going back a little simpler. Uh, when we think of image, it, it's basically something that is visual. It, it's something that, that we can understand, we can wrap our minds around. And, and I don't really think that we can understand how that we're made in God's image. Because describe for me the image of God. You can't. <laughs> if you, that, and that's such a great point. If you can't, we're going to talk a little bit about that. If you really can't describe God's image, what does it mean that we're made in his image? Well, well there's some characteristics that of means God's. We are made as he would like to see us. Because his image, you don't know whether you mean the image of him or what his image is for us. Well, now you guys are getting really deep. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. This is, this, is, this is good stuff. So, uh, Well, as we process this, first of all, uh, the definition of, the, of image for the world 
is uh, physically orientated and perception based. So what, what is the what is the image definition for the world? What I can see. What you can see, but also give me give me a physical. What would be a physical image of the world? What does the world what is the world's image physically? Corruption. Boy, I'm really asking a bad question. <laughs> ask a better one. When ask a better question. When the world thinks of a person and what their body should look like, what are, do they think? Oh, muscle man. Muscles. Models. Models. They're comparing it to some ideal whatever. Whatever, whatever image they have of perfection. the ideal person, that's what we're compared to. To what they think is perfection. And me, it, me, basically. Me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> so that's what the world, the world is basically, if, you, if, if we were all not in a Christian setting, and I said, what is image? Most of the responses would have to do with, with the physical. Six-pack stomach, the muscles, the, the flat, the six, the flat toned, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And so most of that would be based on that. It would, it would be based on what people understand. But when we think that we're made in God's image, it, it goes much deeper than that. And so first of all, we were created in God's image. What's Genesis 1, 26 and 27 say, please? Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like ourselves. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That verse, that verse in itself, you could do a whole six-month study on because it's so incredible. First of all, uh, who did God say, let us make man in what? Our. our. Okay, so what does that mean? He said us too. Let us make the Yes. Our. And, and, and so what, what are we talking about? Jesus is there too. Trinity. So you got the Trinity. They're there. And, and, and again, we talked about this many times. Is, is uh, <laughs> You cannot, our human minds cannot understand the Trinity. We, we, all, we have little cute ways of kind of coming to grips with it, but we really can't. Uh, and I think Pastor Don even mentioned this in her sermon. You, you can't say the Trinity is like water, that water is steam and water is ice and water is fluid because they are not all of those three things at once. And you, you can't say, I like to liken the, the Trinity to that I'm a, I'm a son, uh, I have a father, and that I, I am, I am a, a father, so, but also I'm myself. But I can't be in different places. God, God is in heaven, Holy Spirit is hanging out with him, Jesus is down here on earth. Figure that out. You can't. There, there's no way the Trinity is, is bigger than we can even comprehend. And so that's what's so fascinating. But at the end of the verse that Mary read for us, so what does it say? It says, let us make God in what? Or let us make man in his. We're going to make man in his image. So this is what's so incredible, is you have the Trinity, but then you have the one God. Even in that, even in that verse, it, 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 it's fascinating. And so, here, here we see that that how special are we? I mean, how are we? What were we, whose image were we created in? God's. In God's. So, if we were created in God's image, what value does that give us? Ooh. A lot. <laughs> I mean, I mean, incredible, because we're, we're not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of you know that uh, uh, my handwriting is, is not perfect. I know you're all surprised. But, um, you, you know, uh, uh, that has nothing to do with it. If I, if I drew a big picture and you tried to sell it on eBay, you would not get very much money for it. Because I'm not a very good artist, and that does not have much value. But if God created something... How much value would that have? Immeasurable. Immeasurable. And that's what we have to understand, is that as we were creating his image, that makes us so priceless. And, and this is what's very fascinating, is God in the very beginning, he says it's wrong to kill one of God's images. He says this isn't good because in a sense, 
If you kill one of God's images, what are you doing? Rebelling against God. You're rebelling against God, and, and you're not killing God, but you are killing something important to God. You are taking something that is precious to him. What does Genesis 9, 6 say, please? Whoever sh sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. So here, here we see is, is that there has to be a payment of blood. If, if there is a, a one of God's images that has been killed, then that's, that's wrong. And there has to be that sacrifice. So, of course, you know, you get into the sacrificial system of the Old Testament. You get into all that kind of stuff. And then what happens, though, when Jesus comes along? He, is the he becomes that final sacrifice where his blood covers it forever for us. And so here we see that it, it was, he, God's point out to us, you are not to kill. You're not to kill because this is of my image. These are one of my images. Now, humanity was created in a special manner. And I, I like this. Uh, what's Genesis 2, 7, please? Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Isn't that so cool? That, that God scooped up. Uh, and, and who created the dust of the earth? God. God did. <laughs> God did. And he went ahead and he formed... And he fashioned man. You know, was he was he five foot eight? Was he six foot three? Was uh, we don't know. Uh, and he, he went ahead. And then what did he do? As he as he formed man, he gave him. He breathed into his nostrils. So as we breathe in and out, what are, what are we actually doing? We are we are modeling the breath of life that God has given us. It, we, we have received that. Uh, you know, when you, when you think of breath, it, it, it's got a lot of power. Ha, have you ever been around uh, anyone who's had bad breath? No. Don't look at anyone next to you. Uh, you know, that morning breath. I, I, I remember uh, uh, there was a little African-American boy when I was a youth pastor, and, and one of my, my youth workers, he came to the altar one Sunday, and one of my youth workers went down to pray with him, and this, he, he was probably 13, 14, hadn't been in church uh, a whole lot. And, and so after they prayed together, uh, this young boy has stood up and he says, man, he said, your breath was humming. <laughs> uh, and that's not a good thing. And, and, and so I, I didn't know what to do. I just about fell over laughing. But, um, you, you know, it, it's, it's when we think of that God's breath comes into us and fills our lungs. And, and what a gift that is. And if you know someone who struggles with breathing, maybe they have to wear oxygen or, or something like that, what, what, how much we take that for granted? I mean, do we think about breathing? I mean, did you only, this morning? Only blondes. Oh, oh okay, I'm going to keep moving on before you get in trouble. Um, <laughs> do, do we, did we think about, you know, I have to take a breath. Isn't, isn't, that's what's so amazing about the body is that God has all of this working, and we don't have to think about it. Wouldn't it be terrible if we had to think about, okay, you better breathe. Okay, your heart better beat. Okay, we talked about the blood. Okay, your red blood cells, you better start moving through the kidneys. Uh, what would happen if we had to think about that? What would happen? Wouldn't we'd, be, we'd, we'd all be dead, because uh, we forget to breathe, or our heart beats or something. So that, that's what's so fascinating. That's why there's... There's no way you can deny the existence of a God because us, the way we're created. And so here we see is, is that breath was breathed in. So what is God's image? We're going to talk about that. First of all, we are not to make a portrayal of God's image. And we read that in Exodus 24, uh, 20 verse 4. Someone read that first, please. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. Now, why are we commanded? I mean, this is one of the Ten Commandments. Why are, why are we commanded this? Why, why is this so important to God? Because he's first. He's first, but also what, what do we as people do? Embellish. We embellish, but also what do we do? 
Exactly. Worship other things. Worship other things. Let me give you an example. Ask a better question. I know it. I know it. I'm not all there right now. Uh, if this, if I told you all that if you hold this cup, instantly 15 pounds would drop off you, what would happen? We laugh. <laughs> everyone would run. I'm not saying everyone. But you should I'm, be I'm just, shrinking right now. I should be. <laughs> but what would happen? What would people do to this cup? Give it. You would what? People would fight over it. Yeah. <laughs> they covet it. <laughs> they would covet it. They would fight over it. They would rush to get it. Uh, but if I lost 15 pounds, what does that have to do with this cup? Nothing. Nothing. And so what? Why? one of the reasons why we're not to make an image of God is because an image, how much power does an image have? None. It has none. But, but what do people do? People tend to worship it. People tend to, to focus on it. That's why, I, I, I'll tell you that, I, I've told you this before, this is why change in church is so hard. Because people get caught up in God in things. Mm -hmm. They start getting caught up in the image of God instead of God. When I, when I come in here, uh, it's got blue carpet. So that's how I worship God. This is how I understand God. God has blue carpet in our Wednesday night. Now, if this carpet has changed to hot pink, woo, that's got to be of the devil. Because that's not how God does it. That's not how I understand God. And so what we do is, is too often we, we idolize and we worship things that are not of God. And, and he very, very clearly says, don't make an idol because you're missing out. That's why in many churches, if they sing Amazing Grace every Sunday, if all of a sudden they don't sing it, what happens? Sinner. There's pandemonium. Because they've not done it the way they understand God. We try to shrink God down. A guy named J.D. Phillips wrote a great book called uh, Your God is Too Small. If you ever get some time, it's only about 70, 80 pages, give or take. It is a phenomenal book. Your God is Too Small. He basically, once you read that book, you'll reread it, you'll reread it twice, and then you will, you will challenge yourself. Because what it does is it says, we have put God in a box. We have put God in our framework. And, and that's why it's saying that we're not to make a betrayal, because if, if this cup is, if, if it's got a picture of Jesus on, and this is God, then we're shrink, trying to shrink Jesus down into this little cup. And, and this is what we need to see. We could not, we could not make a portrayal of God's image. I mean, and not only are we not supposed to, but we couldn't. There's no way. Uh, what's uh, uh, Isaiah 40, verse 18 say? To whom can you compare God? What image can you find to resemble him? That's why in the, in the beginning when we were talking about the image of God, that really is, is even more mind-boggling. Because how could you make an image of God? If God is so big, how can, how can I, I mean, even if, even if we took a, a painting and, and it was as big as the United States of America and we lay it down, would that be enough to capture God? No. No, because why? God is where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Not only is God everywhere, but he always what? Was. He always is. He always will be. So you, you would have, you, there's no way possible to shrink God down to an image. So why do we have pictures portraying God? That's a great question. <laughs> um, Is that just as a reminder, reminder to, to make I, I think, think of God? I think there are my, and, and folks, please know I'm going to get really heret heretical, heretical, say that word for me. Heretical, heretical thank you. I'm going to get really heretical tonight. Um, yeah, Jesus is not got white skin and blue eyes and a little beard. My dad was long watching hair. that old movie. He did have long hair. But, well, maybe. <laughs> My dad was watching that old movie. I forget what the name of it was, but it was the story of Jesus. Like, yeah. And he's asking if I ever seen it. I said, nah. And he said, man, you ought to watch this when this guy really looks like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Warner Solomon, you guys have all seen Jesus' the senior picture. You know, the picture of his face. Um, Did you see the... Um, Did he just say Jesus is senior picture? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where they allowed... Lord, I'm not they allowed... Uh, <laughs> they allowed scientists to look at this 
shroud of Turin. The Turin, yeah, and, yep. And do the images and have right. the computer make the likeness of the right, hand that was in right. there. Right, right, yeah. And, and, and so here, here's what we see is, is we, we all in our mind have this image of Jesus. Jesus was, was probably you know, five foot two to five foot four. We always have him, you know, usually five, eleven, six foot. Uh, he would have had dark olive skin. Uh, he, was, he was Jewish. He would have had a big old honker. Oh, he would have had a big old nose. Matter of fact, Isaiah says he had no beauty to uh, attract us. Uh, he was despised. Uh, I mean, uh, he probably had long hair. Uh, uh, the only reason that we would say that is because he, he probably would have followed the Nazarite oath. But we, you know, we know he had a beard because uh, we're told in Scripture that his beard was, was, was pulled when he was tortured. It was, was yanked out. So other than that, that's all we got. But isn't it funny that all the pictures you, you have, that's why sometimes when, when people make a black Jesus, woo, people get really crazy. That's not how he looked. Well, he probably looked more like that than, than most Jesuses. <laughs> and, and the problem is, is, is that's how, again, that's why we're not to have images, because what do we do is we tend to look at that picture, and please hear me, it's not that that picture is not to give us peace, but we want the picture to give us peace instead of God giving us peace. Do you, do you see what we do is we focus on that. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. This is something I'm living through right now. Uh, Janine's really struggling with me because she says, this is something that your mom wrote on. And it is very special to me, but it's not my mom. And, and I'll probably keep it, but it, it, that is not her. No, I, I get that. In, in the passing of my grandparents and all, the things were neat. And I saw my relatives kind of fight over the things. It was what we did with the things that's yeah. memorable to me. I don't need the thing. I've got the memory of what we did with that. You know, whether it be... That's a man thing. No, but whether it be guns or, or whatever, people fought over the items. All right. I, I remembered fondly what we did with those items, and I think that's the same thing with you're talking about with the image. Right. You don't remember the, the church, remember what God did for you in that church. Yes, and it's and it's okay to have pictures of Jesus. I'm not I'm not saying that, but when we focus more on those than we focus on going to God, we're limiting ourselves. We're you know it's like the people who worship the stars. Pictures you know, are kind of a, a reminder that. Jesus is watching over us. Kind of, yes. As long as we look at that that way, but not all the way he does. And so uh, that's when we see we could not make it uh, you know, because he's everywhere. Well, the definition of image for God, we talked about the definition for the world of image is, is that physical perfection, that you know Barbie doll and Ken doll. Uh, you know there's two people that have surgically had their bodies enhanced to look like I feel so, the, the girl, so sad, she was beautiful before she even started all that junk. Now she looks kind of weird. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, in my opinion. Uh, she was beautiful, I think, before, but anyway, and the Ken guy, he did, just looks creepy. So anyway, uh, the definition of image for God is likeness or reflection. So what is a reflection? Exact image. It's an exact image. But it's not the thing. But it's not the thing. Actually, it's backwards. <laughs> but but it's not the thing. Right. It's not the item. And and so what, it's what people see. It's what people That's true. see. That's right. you, you know, I I was uh, uh, someone when I was doing one of the tours at the Penn, someone took a picture of me leading a tour. One of my kids did, and they showed it to me, and I and I was looking through it, and I was like, I couldn't see me. Because you don't usually see yourself going away. Well, there was a there was a short fat guy with a bald spot. <laughs> These are my pictures too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, Who, who's that guy that's got that bald spot? And and the girl said, That's you. And I said, No, really. Why does he have my jacket on? Why does he have my jeans on? Yeah, that spray stuff. Yeah, I do. I need I need some of that. Uh, Wrong, wrong spray on you him. know, uh, I mean, it, it's like, I don't know when this happened. And, and it, it did. And it, it's, it's, that's why it, it amazes me. But reflection is, is to be accurate. Uh, a reflection is that, is that 
It's that image proposed on something else. And so we are, remember, we are made in, in God's image. But as we talked about, we, we really can't because God can't have an image. So if you want to see God, look in the mirror. If, well, you can see the reflection. Exactly. And, and when, we, when we see that reflection, we should see God. You know, when I, I think of my mom's life, I, I think of a life of a person living for Christ. Uh, she wasn't perfect, but I saw God in her constantly. And so she was reflecting that of God. And, and so here's what we see is, is, is God knew, <laughs> God knew, what, what do we as people need? We all live in Missouri. What's Missouri. Show me. Show me. We, we got to see something. That's, that's part of the reason, too, why Jesus came. Is not only did he come as a sacrifice, but God knew we can't comprehend God. And so that's why God sent Jesus to be our sacrifice, but also to get, for us to get an idea. So Jesus shows us the image or the reflection of God. Uh, what's uh, Colossians 1.15 say, please? Please. The sun is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So, if Jesus is the image, then if we want to know what God looks like, what do we have to look at? Who do we have to look at? Jesus. We have to look at Jesus. What's uh, 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 2 Corinthians 4 4 say, please? 2 Corinthians 4 4 says, Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message and about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So here, here we see it. And this world is a mess. This, this world is, is a mess. And that's because it's not turning to the Lord. It's allowing Satan to be the, the little g-god. But here we have, when we think of God and that well, what Jesus was here for, it, it was here to show God's glory. What's a Hebrews 1 3 say, please? The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. What's that John 14, 9 say, please? Jesus answered. I was ready with both of them. All right. Jesus answered. Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? And so here we see is, is we have, if we wonder what, is it, what does it mean to be the body of Christ, we don't have to guess. We, we don't have to, to form a committee to, to come up with a response. We have seen what it means for our bodies to be the body of Christ. And so look at, let's look at some things. Uh, Jesus showed us humility. What's a Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7 say, please? Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. That verse amazes me. What did Jesus make himself, according to that verse, Philippians servant. 2, 6 and 7? Back up. What, servant. Before that, he made himself nothing. 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 Wow. You know, I, that's, this is why I would be a bad Mormon. I, I'd be a bad Mormon because when I got my own universe, I'd be a bad God. I'd be like zapping people. I'd be like, oh, you didn't go to church because you stayed up too late on Saturday night? You're going to get a flat tire. I mean, I would be, I would be vengeful. I, 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 you know, I, I really would. 
I mean, I'd be terrible. I'd be like, you know what? Oh, there's someone I like. Boom, boom. Here's a million dollars, buddy. I, I mean, I would be really bad. And, and because I got to tell you, boy, that power would go to my head. Woo. I, I, you know, I would think I was all that in a bag of chips. I wouldn't care how many bald spots I had. Man, it would be big time. But what did Jesus do? And he is God. But what did he make himself for us? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. When we think that that is, is the image of God, is, is willing to give up everything for us. Do, do you see how that gives us value? Uh, Jesus showed us servanthood. What's Matthew 20, 28 say, please? That is so incredible. Is that Jesus' whole plan was to give. Was to give away. That is why he existed. How easy is it for us to be selfish? <laughs> I was seeing how honest you were. What, what's uh, when two kids, two toddlers, or this is their third word they learn? What the. Mine. What's the first word they learn? No. no. <laughs> because that's what they're told all the time. No. Uh, and, and so, uh, it, you know, the, I, I say it's a third word because hopefully they learn uh, mama or daddy in there, the second word. Of, I always, you know, there's not a lot of you who are going to have little ones, but uh, I, I tell Pastor Donna this. I say, do not say mama. Do not say mama because all the ones want their first, baby's first words to be mama. I taught, I pounded my kids. Uh, or, uh, do not say dad all the first time dads want the, the baby to say dad and, and I pounded my kids mama mama because when two o'clock in the morning was going around <laughs> they said mama I said it's you honey you don't want me so don't if it, for new dads out there don't don't pound them and say dad make them say mama so anyway and so here's what we see is is that that Jesus showed us that he gave up all of that all of that to serve us and, and, and we as people, it's easy for us to be selfish. It really is. Uh, and, and when we think that how easy it would have been for God, Jesus, to have been selfish. I mean, what did he give up? What did he give up to come here? Everything. Everything. What, what else? What else? I mean, let's get specific. He gave up power. Power. What else? What's, what's a day like in heaven? Who well, knows? And we know. <laughs> what does scripture say a day is like in heaven? What are the angels doing? Worshiping. Oh, worshiping. What are the seraphim and the cherubim doing? Worshiping. They're worshiping God. They're worshiping God. Crying out, holy, holy, holy. What are the 24 elders doing? Bowing down. Bowing down. We're taking their crowns off. He had, that's, what, that's what we're going to do in eternity. And that celebration, he gave all that up to what happened when he gets here. Became nothing. Became nothing. Rejected, despised, spit upon. Man, think of the depths of love that God has shown for us. And then this is something even, even more, is Jesus showed us love. What's uh, John 15, 13 say, please? There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. Yeah. You know, that is it in a nutshell, isn't it? It's very easy to say, I love you. It really is. I, I mean, uh, it's hard for us guys, you know, love your brother. Uh, it, but it's very, very easy for the words to fall from our lips. But how easy is it to live it? It's not so easy. And, and, and we know in our lives the people that really love us by what? Showing it. They show it. They demonstrate it. There's action involved in that. And, and so... Jesus and God in heaven didn't just say, you know, I really love my people. I really care for my people. He actually sent his only begotten son. And then that son didn't just come down and whip us and, and try to, to shape us into to what he wanted. He served us. And as he served us, that he gave his life for us. Which when we think of, of how incredible the God who can do anything loves us so much that his son did that, Wow, that, that, just, that just puts a stamp on us, how special we are. That, that puts a stamp on us, 
on how valuable we are. We, we as people have a God who cares so much for us that this God gave everything up so that we could know him. And when we process that, here's our problem. We get caught up in this world too much. You know, when everything is said and done, what's going to matter? Going Where we're at with the Lord. That's what's going to matter. That's what, all, that's what it all is. And, and so that's the key, is, is when we have that, receive that love from God, receive that relationship, then it helps us to be the body of Christ. Because when we receive that love for God, then we can love others. You can't give out what you don't have. And if a person has not received that love, then they can't love. And, and, and that's like grace as well. If you know someone who's very critical and is always, always condemning others, what are they doing? You know down deep they're beating themselves up. They're condemning themselves because you, they're only giving out what they have. And so we need to receive that love of God. Let God love you. Well, so if, if, we, if our bodies were made in the, in the likeness of Christ, how, how can we be the likeness of Christ? Uh, first of all, walk as Jesus did. So we're to walk as Jesus did. And, and what does 1 John 2, 6 say, please? Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Okay. And so how did Jesus walk? That was his walk, his, his lifestyle. What were some attributes of Jesus' lifestyle? What did he do when the kids came around? Shut up, you brats. <laughs> Pull them up. What did he do when the sinners and tax collectors walked by? He invited one to be a disciple. <laughs> he invited most of them to be a disciple, yeah. He, he invited them. And, and what did he do for those who needed healing? He healed. And so we are, and with our bodies, we are to walk as Jesus did. And this is incredible. We are the aroma of Christ. And I love that image. Someone read us 2 Corinthians 2.15 for us, please. A Christ like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. You know, that to me is amazing that we are to be a, 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 a have an aroma of Christ like. What, what, what do you think of aroma? What, what do you think of? I, I know what you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. Perfume. <laughs> yeah. I, perfume, that's not what Rich is thinking of. No, about, I was actually thinking of skunk. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> With my trapping learning that I'm doing, I've learned that it's, it, it's, it has an effect on you. Sure. And it doesn't even have to be there to have an effect on you. And I'm, I know that's a sacrilegious way of thinking of it, but the negative effect, God can have an effect on people even though he's not physically there. You can sense his presence. And, and, and our lives have an aroma. When, when you're around a, a, a negative uh Person, what 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 does what do you smell? Agitation. Trouble, turmoil, trouble, rat. turmoil. Negative. Rat, a rat, <laughs> a wet rat. It's making it worse. You know, uh, we watched uh, the this uh, Christmas. We love Christmas movies, and we watched The Grinch. And, and, and that uh, uh, it just it, he just has an aroma uh, until his heart grows four times too big and that kind of stuff. And and so think about that. Is 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 our aroma? It, what? How is our life? Are we like the aroma of Christ? What is the aroma of Christ? What does Jesus smell like? Love. Love. Peace. Peace. Healing, Myrrh. Healing, calming. Righteous. Healing. Righteousness. And, and all of those things, that's the aroma of Christ. And we are to have that aroma. And, and, and when we think about that, is our lives can have that aroma. Our, our lives can make that difference. Because what does aroma do? John 12, 1 through 3, I love that. Uh, I almost was going to use that as a sermon. I was going to preach mom's funeral, but because it says that the woman anointed the feet of Jesus, and it says, "What did the, the perfume do?" Take away the stink. It took away the stink. Yeah. It, it permeated. It permeated through the whole house, and that's what aroma does. We know that in a negative sense, is one stinky person can permeate the whole room if if left un unbattled, I guess. But it's true. We can do the same. Yes. yes. And, and, and how much, uh, you know, we had a dog that had got sprayed by a skunk, 
and we wash that dumb dog in tomato juice. They say that works. We, we wash that dog 14 times, and it still stunk. It took about two weeks before he smelled like a dog, which was a bad <laughs> smell, but he really stunk for about two weeks. And, and, I, and I thought about this as, as I was preparing this. I thought about how, like you said, one negative person. And we're all we're having a good time. Woo, praise the Lord. One person comes and starts complaining. What, what happens? The mood changes. The, the aroma changes. The, the, yeah, the aroma changes. So the question I want to get back to us is, what is our aroma like? Is it, is it a pleasing perfume? Or is it a skunky stink? And, and how are we... How are we affecting people? Another thing we see, we're to shine for Christ. I like this one. Philippians 2.15. <clears throat> What's Philippians 2.15 say, please? So that no one can criticize you, live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Shining. Isn't that incredible? I mean, when, when people see us, do we shine? You know, it's interesting. Uh, 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 I've been kind of the representation of our family, and, and um, Dad had me go through the apartment building and, uh, to several people and, and share the news that Mom passed away. And there's one little old, uh, uh, she's 92 years old, older woman. And, um, and I went and I said, you know, I got some bad news. And I, I told her mom went to be with heaven. And, uh, and this woman, you know, she started crying. But then she said, she said, your mother was perfect. And I said, wow. <laughs> and she said, I said, why do you say that? And she said, because she shined. And I just kind of took that in my mind. In, in the obituary we put, she was described as a And Janine, uh, you know, my wife is, is, is such a great gift from God. Uh, but she says, if you put perfect in, that's, that's going to seem a little arrogant. I said, I don't care. I really don't care what you think. <laughs> she was perfect. She shined. And, and, and I thought, isn't it fascinating? This, this woman has met a lot of people in 92 years. That's true. And for her to say that she shined. And I thought, that's what I want. I, I, I mean, you know, it, I do a lot of processing. And I, and I, and I thought... Uh, uh, what do I want people to say when I'm not here? And, and you know, do I, I want them to say he was funny? I, I, you know, I, I am funny, you know. Well, actually, I'm hilarious. But um, <laughs> anyway, I, I, I really don't want you to say that. It, okay, someone, one person say it. One person, the rich say it. Yeah. If, I'm, if I go before you, you say he was funny. That'll be the plan. You go. Okay. I don't want to <laughs> We're all, we're all going to go eventually. Yeah, but I can't say it if I go first. So okay, first. okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> But, man, what a, what a description if someone said he, sh he shined for God. That is beautiful. And, and so that's what we're to shine for God. So we're also to be holy and blameless. What's Ephesians 1, 4 say, please? Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, now, what is, again, and we've talked about this many times, but the word holiness has, has gotten holy. It's got such a negative connotation because when someone says things holy, what, what, what images are, are pulled up? Better than. Better than. Self-sanctified. You know, uh, low dresses and high hair, or, you know, buttoned up <laughs> to the collar, and, you know, you can't say uh, bad words or go to movies. or we, we, we instantly come up with rules when we think of holiness. But that has nothing to do with holiness. <clears throat> What, what is the best definition for holiness? I've shared this with you guys before. Living for God. Set aside for a special purpose. Set apart. Set apart. That we exist. I thought that was a saint. It's what's that? Saint. Well, a saint is to be. Why is a person a saint? Because they've been set apart for something. Because they're living a holy life. Okay, so holy and saint are the same. Well, a saint is living a holy life. Saints are holy. But aren't we all set apart for God's purpose? Absolutely. Are we all living it? Everyone was created to be set apart for God. Everyone. From the person that's homeless on the street to the person who just killed their family. Every one of us were set apart to live for God. 
but are we doing it? That's the question. Are we being holy and blameless? And even, even I believe there's good Christian people that, that believe in the Lord, but are we truly living holy lives where we are set apart, where we exist solely for God's purpose? Or, or does that selfishness, that carnal nature, kind of creep up every now and then? And so that's why my life's purpose is, is to help us to take one step closer, is to take, take us to that one step closer to God to be more holy, to more set apart, to be more like Him. Uh, because we all have areas to work on, amen? You all know that, right? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and so what we need to do is, is as we're, we're being set apart for God, what does that mean? How does it look? And, and that's how we grow closer to God. You know, this Sunday I'm going to challenge us to, to have a, a personal vision. And I'm going to challenge us with some specifics. Uh, where are we at right now? Because the first part of a journey, what do you have to do? Know where you're starting. Know where you're starting. And so what, where, where are we at right now and where does God want us to go? And I'm going to challenge us this Sunday to... Uh, Lord willing, I want to challenge us this Sunday to to do what uh, to to really look at our lives and say, how can we be more set apart this year than we were last year? I hope my my role as a pastor is is to teach you how to draw closer to God. I can't do it for you. I I, I can't. I, I wish I could. But I, I can't. And, and so my, my role is just to put it out there. What you do with it is up to you. But every one of us, including myself, are in the process of being closer and closer and being more set apart. And, and we get that from Jesus. Then, and also this is what we see is we are the mirror of God. So what's 2 Corinthians 3.18 say, please? So we are transformed into his image. And, and, and look at that. So as we talk about our bodies, we need to see that our bodies were created in his image. And, and again, is it the image of the Jesus that we see or the, the God that's so big? No. How, how, how can our bodies demonstrate the image of God? By acting like him. By acting like him. Smelling like him. Not literally, but right. yes, the people notice the aroma, yeah. and, and that's what a compliment like this about that they see us shine. Right. And they're not talking about our physical being, but they're talking that something's different about us, and they've known us hopefully long enough to know it's not us. Right. Right. And so, I encourage us never ever forget how precious we are, because we were made in His image. And as we're made in his image, what, what are we to, to do? We are to reflect God. So do people, do people see God in us? You know, I, I uh, and, and this, was, this was Satan, I know it was. But uh, uh, a couple of days ago, I was really beating myself up. I said, I, I don't know if I've been a good enough son. Could I have done more? Could I have helped more? Could I have? And um, I had a great, 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 great close friend. And he said, get behind you, Satan. He said, get behind my friend, Satan. And it, it was like, a, it was clarity. Because what we tend to do is we forget that we were created in his image for him. And we beat ourselves up. And, and next time that Satan comes around and beats you up, next time Satan, because he does, next time Satan kind of pounds you, I, I want you to say, get behind me, Satan, because you know what? I was created to be like God. And I'm not perfect, but you know what? 
man, I'm doing the best I can. And when we do the best we can, what's that? I thought you said they avoid my clothes. No, no, no. no. You, you know, when I get to heaven uh, and, and Janine gets to heaven, uh, they're going to give me binoculars because mom and Janine are going to be, and grandma are going to be so close to the throne, I'm going to be like, you know, I'm going to be, me and Rich are going to be like, you know, the back 40. But we'll be there. We'll be there. I'll yeah. see you there. Yeah. Well, me and Rich are going to be there. You know, they're going to be having a really party up there and we're going to get like, you know, the, they're going to have the harps and we're going to have just the little blowers. You know, uh, there, but we'll be there them. blowing them. And, and, and so, uh, and that's the key. I think they call right. that a kazoo. Is that what it is, a kazoo? <laughs> All right. Instead of a harp, we'll have a kazoo. But uh, so I just want to I just want to encourage you. Receive the fact that you we are made in God's image, and receive how valuable you are, because that is what we were. And also, we have a responsibility as we were made in that image. What should people see? They should see His image reflecting out of us. Questions, comments, concerns? I was going to let you guys out a little early tonight. That is early for you. <laughs> I'll be back on my game in a couple weeks. So. All right. Well, um, again, don't ever forget how much God loves you. Don't ever forget that. So, I'm going to bless you all. You can please rise. And after I bless you all, I want you to go to someone, and I want you to sniff them. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I just see, just, just see what kind of aroma you have, okay? Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. All right. Let me bless you all. Father, thank you for this day, and thank you that we were made in your image. And, Lord, as we're studying the Bible, uh, the Bible and the body, I just ask, Lord, that we will never forget that our bodies were created to be holy, to be created to be set apart for you so that others see you in us. And, Lord, may we always hang on to that fact. And may we never forget that you love us deeper than we can ever begin to comprehend and that you're here for us. And may our lives affect others so that they see Jesus in us. Uh, bless my brothers and sisters. Please be with them this week if we get the cold weather that uh, they're saying. Please take care of them. Please keep them warm. Please be with those who uh, don't have any heat right now, Father. Please be with those who may not have the jackets. Uh, uh, please be with those who, who don't have the cold weather uh, gear. We just ask, Lord, that uh, you'll deliver, uh, maybe through us, that you'll deliver angels that, that will take care of them and, and be with them in a special way. But, Father, thank you because you are good and you are God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen.